Class 10, Poetry Section, Guided Reading Life, The Grumble Family, I Am Every Woman, The Ant and the Cricket, The Secret of the Machines, No Men Are Foreign and The House on Elm Street. Greetings to you all. Welcome to Class 10, Unit 1, Poem, Life, written by Henry Van Dyke, Memorator. Let me but live my life from year to year with forward face and unreluctant soul, not hurrying to, nor turning from the goal, not mourning for the things that disappear in the dim past, nor holding back in fear from what the future wheels, but with the whole and happy heart that pays its toll to youth and age and travels on with cheer. So let the wheel wind up the hill or down over rough or smooth the journey will be joy still seeking what I sought when but a boy new friendship high adventure and a crown my heart will keep the courage of the quest and hope the road's last turn will be the best. Now a few words about the poet. Henry Van Dyke, 1852-1933. He was an American author, poet, educator and clergyman. He served as a professor of English literature at Princeton University between 1899 and 1923. He was elected to the American Academy of Arts and letters and received many other honors. Thank you. Next poem. The Grumble Family Written by Lucy Mont Montgomery the poet gives a vivid picture of neighborhood scenes. There is a family nobody likes to meet. They live, it is said, on complaining street. In the city of never are satisfied. The river of discontent beside. They growl at that and they growl at this, whatever comes, there is something amiss. And whether their station be high or humble, they are all known by the name of Grumble. The weather is always too hot or cold. Summer and winter alike, they scold. Nothing goes right with the folks you meet. Down on the gloomy complaining street. They growl at the rain. And they growl at the sun. In fact, their growling is never done. And if everything pleased them, there isn't a doubt. They would growl that they had nothing to grumble about. But the curious thing is that not one of the same can be brought to acknowledge his family name for never a grumbler will own that he is connected with it at all you see the worst thing is that if anyone stays among them too long he will learn their ways and before he dreams of the terrible jumble he is adopted into the family of Grumble. And so it were wisest to keep our feet from wandering into complaining street and never to growl 
whatever we do lest we be mistaken for grumblers too let us learn to walk with a smile and a song no matter if things do sometimes go wrong and then be our station high or humble we will never belong to the family of grumble now let us see something about the author lucy mont montgomery 1874 to 1942 was a canadian author best known for a series of novels beginning in 1908 with anne of green gables montgomery went on to publish 20 novels as well as 530 short stories 500 poems and 30 essays a prolific writer montgomery published over 100 stories between 1897 and 1907 montgomery's work diaries and letters have been read and studied by scholars and readers worldwide moving on to the next poem third poem i am every woman written by rakhi narayani shrik this poem talks about the multifaceted nature of women today's women are empowered brave strong and resolute they are always ready to take up new ventures they are persistent and work tirelessly to prove what they are capable of women have to be treated respectfully for the growth of a nation a woman is beauty innate a symbol of power and strength she puts her life at stake she is real she is not fake the summer of life she is ready to see in spring she says spring will come again my dear let me care for the ones who are near she is the woman she has no fear strong is she in her faith and believes persistence is the key to everything says she despite the sighs and groans and moans she is strong in her faith firm in her belief she is a lioness don't mess with her she'll not spare you if you are a prankster don't ever try to sow her pride her self respect she knows how to thaw you saw you so beware she is today's women today's women dear love her respect her keep her near a few words about the author rakhi narayani shurke is an academician with a passion for writing poems as a medium of self expression she is a post graduate with a bachelor's degree in education moving on to the next poem the ant and the cricket adapted from aesop's fables a fable is a traditional story that teaches us a moral lesson usually the characters in the fables are animals this poem the ant and the cricket teaches us the importance of hard work and planning a silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come not a crumb to be found 
on the snow covered ground not a flower could be seen not a leaf on the tree oh what will become says cricket of me at last by starvation and famine made bold all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold away he set off to a miserly ant to see if to keep him alive he would grant him shelter from rain and a mouthful of grain he wished only to borrow he would repay it tomorrow if not he must die of starvation and sorrow says the ant to the cricket i am your servant and friend but we ants never borrow we ants never lend but tell me dear cricket did you lay anything by when the weather was warm quoth the cricket not i my heart was so light that i sang day and night for all nature looked gay for all nature looked gay you sang sir you say go then says the ant and dance the winter away thus ending he hastily lifted the wicket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket folks call this a fable i will warrant it true some crickets have four legs and some have two now let us study something about the author aesop's fables is a collection of fables credited to aesop a slave and a storyteller believed to have lived in ancient greece between 620 and 564 bce these fables became popular when they emerged in print several stories are attributed to aesop even today the process of inclusion is continuous and new stories are being added collections of aesop's fables were among the earliest books to be printed in many languages moving on to the next poem poem 5 the secret of the machines written by rudyard kipling the poem deals with the problems of modern technology and automation in the beginning the reader gets informed about how machines are produced and what kind of treatment they need afterwards the machines explain how they can serve humanity the poem ends with the statement that machines although capable of great deeds are still nothing more than creations of the human brain we were taken from the ore bed and the mines we were melted in the furnace and the pit we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gouged to fit some water coal and oil is all we ask and a thousand of an inch to give us play and now if you will set us to our task we will serve you for and 20 hours a day we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive we can print and plow and weave and heat and light we can run and race and swim and fly and drive we can see and hear and count and read and write but 
remember please the law by which we live we are not built to comprehend a lie we can neither love nor pity nor forgive if you make a slip in handling us you die though our smoke may hide the heavens from your eyes it will vanish and the stars will shine again because for all our power and weight and size we are nothing more than children of your brain now let us study something about the author rudyard kipling was born on december 30th 1865 in bombay india he was educated in england but returned to india in 1882 a decade later kipling married caroline balestier and settled in bratley boro vermont where he wrote the jungle book 1894 among a host of other works that made him hugely successful kipling was the recipient of the 1907 nobel prize in literature he died in 1936 moving on to the next poem poem 6 no men are foreign written by james felconer cricket Let us read on the poem to know why we mustn't hate our brethren because they belong to different country or speak a different language the poet reminds us of that how all people are similar and part of the brotherhood of men by the end of the poem we get to know how it is unnatural to fight against ourselves Remember no men are strange no country is foreign beneath all uniforms a single body breathes like ours the land our brothers walk upon is earth like this in which we all shall lie they too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvests by wars long winter starved their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own remember they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispose us betray condemn remember we who take arms against each other it is the human earth that we defile our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own remember no men are foreign and no country is strange a few words about the author james felcon cricket 1918 to 2009 born james harold cricket was an english poet translator and traveler writer he wrote over 30 books including autobiographies novels and plays kirkup wrote his first book of poetry the drowned sailor at the downs which was published in 1947 his hometown of south shields now holds a growing collection of his works in the central library and artifacts from his time in japan are housed in the nearby museum 
His last volume of poetry was published during the summer of 2008 by Red Squirrel Press and was launched at a special event at Central Library in South Shields. Moving on to the last poem that is The House on Elm Street written by Nadia Bush. It sat alone. What happened there is still today unknown. It is a very mysterious place and inside you can tell it has a ton of space but at the same time it is bare to the bone at night the house seems to be alive lights flicker on and off i am often tempted to go to the house to just take a look and see what it is really about but fear takes over me i drive past the house almost every day the house seems to be a bit brighter on this warm summer day in may it plays with your mind to me i say it is one of a kind beside the house sits a tree it never grows leaves not in the winter spring summer or fall it just sits there never getting small or ever growing tall how could this be rumors are constantly being made and each day the house just begins to fade what happened inside that house i really don't know i guess it will always be a mystery thank you all hearty thanks to all the subscribers viewers i owe a lot to you